Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. You're watching Share Shootout here on CNBC Africa, first with Business Worldwide. On to part two of the program. And before the break, Ingham and Witten. It's so much easier than calling the Mark and Mark because they're both spelled the same way and it's terribly complicated. Both gave us two of their share picks. It was Mark uh, Witten who came up with Woolworths Holdings and ShopRite Holdings. Woolworths got the Ingham thumbs up and ShopRite got the Ingham thumbs down. And then um, Mark Ingham, ELB Group, got a big thumbs down. Likes the business, does Witten. He likes the business of ELB Group. He likes what they do, but he doesn't like the share. And this is what it's about. This is share shootout, not shoot down the chief executive or the company or the people who own the shares. It's shooting down the share itself. It's nothing personal. Please don't take it personally, Mr. Basson and others. Um, and then Crooks Brothers gets the big thumbs up. Now we get to the final part of the game this evening, and I'd like your third pick, please. And I, I, was, I was interested, Mark Whitten, mm. in this particular pick, because I was looking through going, he's picked Woolworths, he's picked ShopRite. Why has he then gone and chosen pick and pay. 30 seconds to explain yourself, please. Because I think you can still make a lot of money on pick and pay on the, on the short side. I think the business has some serious structural issues that need to be resolved. You know, like we're talking about ShopRite taking cash off their balance sheet building DCs. Pick and pay doesn't have the cash. They've been borrowing to fund dividends. So they now need to do tenant driven developments with high escalations. They haven't got the DC strategy right. I think they don't place the business very well. You know, ShopRite is value. You know, Woolies is, is, is the sort of high end LSM. Pick and pay doesn't play in either and it plays in both, if you know what I mean. So there's no clear strategy going forward. New management hasn't been tested. And I think as long as the family has control, you're not going to be able to execute your strategy. No, that's such a good one. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I can't wait to see you shoot this one. Down. Go on, try yeah, it. Yeah, to me, this is a bit late to shoot down pick and pay. This, to me, is the ultra long one, in fact. <laughs> and uh, with it goes a, a range of possibilities on capital management, not a, and, and that includes a sort of dividend policy, too. We are awaiting to see what Richard Brasher comes up with. They've got a phenomenal footprint out there and they've got a great history. So, this is one that's on the canvas at the moment, and I don't short stops mm -hmm. on the canvas. All right. So he has Richard Brasher. He's the guy yes. from Tesco. Mm -hmm. He had a bit of a falling out with the chairman of Tesco, who then became mm -hmm. the chairman of chief executive. Mm -hmm. And then they found horse meat. Sword, essentially then then they, yeah. found, they found horse meat in the hamburgers. Um, and it was all just a little bit messy in the aftermath of Richard Brasher leaving Tesco. What tells you that this guy's going to make a difference? sufficient difference to uh, lift him uh, off the canvas. I'm asking him uh, as to why okay. he supports Richard Brasher. Nice guy, spoken to him, terribly impressive, doesn't have to do particularly much to get things right, but why is he the right guy? He's been given pretty much a blank canvas and... Uh, and he's lying on it at the moment. Uh, pretty <laughs> much, in fact, yes. And, and, and so, you know, we, we're going to see some pretty much out-the-box out thinking from pick and pay in but the next But can one. they really have out-the-box thinking? Because Mark Whitten makes a very good point that through the Pickwick holding, there's mm. more than 50% Ackerman family. Uh, Raymond Ackerman still hangs about the mm. office. Gareth is still the chairman. There's still the family control. It hasn't been a spectacular success story in the last couple of years. Look at the CEO spec that was issued. And the family, in fact, were involved with that too. Mm. And, and part of the reason Richard has joined is particularly because he's got a, 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 a hands-off approach. So you've got that security, I guess, if you will, of the uh, family holding, which mm. can be a double-edged sword. I would happily mm. concede that fact. Um, but this is uh, a company that invented grocery supermarkets in South Africa. ShopRite wasn't even on the horizon. Kodak invented I think digital, the, I think digital that's important photography though. and what's you happened know, to Kodak. I, I think that's actually important though, what he just said, because it, it's actually, it's very true, but you know, when Pick and Pay enjoyed its success, the world was very different. I think people forget that you know, five to ten years ago, there was no f you know, fruit and veg city, there was no food lover's market. Macro hadn't become, begun to come into food. Woolworths was a very niche sort of player that was very boutique and sort of almost like a thrups. You know, the world has changed, and I think that Pick and Pay, unfortunately, they're going to be kind of like a, a dinosaur. <laughs> they're going to be fed off by their competitors for a long time to come. And as far as we're concerned, the culture is set from the top down, and Raymond and his son, to have inculcated this culture that DC is not the way forward. You know, and I see it personally, but between the service in the Pick and Pay shops, the quality of the product, etc., you know, it's, it's not hard to, to see, you know, who's shopping where. I, I, I've, got, I've got to back you on this one. I'm not sure, I'm, I, I like the long story of it, but I don't know if I have the patience. If I was going to go long on anything, I think I would go do, long do with Do you think they'll be able brothers. to, like, get margin almost to double over the next, like, how are they going to put price increases through versus their competitors? You, you, you have to look at scenarios, and there's a cost element to it, more mm. the cost element than the actual pricing element, because they all have the same pricing. Mm. roughly speaking. 
and uh, they've got a, an incredible footprint. And what's interesting, the amount of money that's been spent in that business in, in the more recent times has been phenomenal. But will it be spent effectively? He doesn't think so. You think it will. Absolutely. You'd go long on pick and pay long. as a long-term view. However, the call is to short it. You're shooting down the short on pick and pay. Exactly. It's his right to do that, I'm mm. afraid. So there we go. Well, I can't wait for five years' time. We bring you both in here again. You won't have to wait five years. I think <laughs> wait. results are out in two weeks. That's just all you need to wait for. Oh, I can't wait to see. But also, we wouldn't yet have seen the brazier effect. Let's be fair about that. He only arrived in February, March. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing whether or not he's able to, sh to shake the family tree on this particular one. Let's then go to your final pick this evening, please, Mark Ingham from Ingham Analytics. It's not a micro cap. In fact, it is a fairly respectable 14.5 billion rand company in the media space, largely run by a bunch of former communists. It's called HCI. You know, it's extraordinary how commies can teach capitalists how to do things. 40% growth in net asset value compound over the last five years. It gives you exposure to cash generating assets, particularly media, but there's a host of other assets too that you can't get typically in JSE space. Um, <coughs> they've also unbundled to unlock significant value through Nivius. KWV is a very nice holding mm -hmm. there. So you're getting a nice mix of stuff over here. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that they will continue with that growth. All right, there we go. Not even 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. HCI, you don't look impressed. Mark. No. You don't look impressed. Why are you not impressed? Because you don't like if I want to buy a retailer, I buy a retailer. If I want to buy an iron ore business, I buy. when I start buying businesses that are a mix of assets where you know, you're kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none. Do you like Bitvest? I do like Bitvest. <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> Berkshire has yeah, a way for You know, at the, at the end of the day, but that's a different management structure. To me, at the, at the end of the day, they're chasing too many rabbits, and it looks like a couple of them might be getting away from them. Forty percent compound growth in earnings. I think that's pretty good. They have done very well over the last few few years, few quarters, to be honest with you. And from our point of view, you know, we we tend to want a pure play asset. We we tend to read the macro slightly differently. Going forward, though, you know, as you spoke about earlier, I'm not sure whether I personally back management. I don't mm -hmm. have a good feel for the management team and I don't find them very the accessible. Operating management are pretty good. Mm. I think the, the the access, good. Access, accessibility of management is an interesting one because just because you don't have access to management does it make the management team bad? Does it make them bad at what they do or does it just give you a lack of comfort? Because certainly from a media perspective they've got zero media profile. They, yes. they will not see to interviews. They no, will they, not they, talk about the know, if I, it, It's not a question of me having you know Time, you know, time in terms of with, with, with be it a whitey person or be it a, a Joffy. I don't, you know, it's hard to get access to them too. But at least when they stand up and present, they give you a, a set of almost promises, explain their business, they understand their business model. I often get confused trying to understand this business model and trying to understand what it is they're trying to achieve. Now, is, That's kind of the is, is he missing out on the best opportunity that you presented this evening, Mark Ingham, or does he have a point? You see, these are nuggets that you've got to take time and trouble to dig into. You can't sit behind a computer and look at a nice fancy mm. presentation. You've got to do your homework on this one. If you do your homework and you think, goodness me, this is an absolute steal. You know, it's a bargain, it's got great cash generation, and they're deploying that cash generation into growth assets. Uh, we're at this point, we have to leave it, but you're mm. shooting him down at the knees. Both kneecaps or just one kneecap? I'd say one kneecap for now, and that I agree with him, it is nuggets to understand, but I also find it to be almost like spin. Things keep changing within the business, and it's hard to figure out what's going to be the driver of growth, what themes they're playing. It's just, to me, it's, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a, a what they call it, a matzo pudding. Which brings <laughs> us now to the very difficult part of the show, and that is I've got to make a decision as to who stays and who goes. Historically on the show, those of you who watch it regularly know the person in the middle never wins. That is historically been, <laughs> the, been the case. So let's just have a quick recap. Mark Whitten from Kaizen, Woolworths Holdings, big thumbs up from Mark Ingham. P uh, ShopRite was shot down and pick and pay, which was a short, which is the first time we've had a short on the show and I like your strategy and I like the approach that you've taken on it, but that was shot down because, says Mark Ingham, he believes that there's a long-term growth strategy. Well, we hope so, because uh, a lot of jobs are at stake, and there's a nice bit of historical element to it as well. Mark Ingham from Ingham Analytics, a considerably more courageous portfolio of shares, adventurous even. In ELB Group Limited, it was shot down, not on the basis of the, of the business, the business model, simply on the basis that it's a lousy share to own if you want to take a decent slug of it. Crooks Brothers, however, did get the thumbs up. Hoskin Consolidated Investments, however, also got shot down. There is just isn't enough visibility. So, do we set a new precedent? Do we boot out the guy on the far side with a snappy dress sense, or do we boot out the guy in the middle as we always do? Oh, this is the hardest one in a long time. I'm afraid, Mark Ingham, for once, you have been trumped. You're gone. You're out. 
Goodbye, Mark Ingham. In the battle of Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, it has been Mark Ingham who has been sent out to go and dust the fire at Sibania Gold, and Mark Whitten wins this evening's share shootout. He can assume that Sibania Gold is his immediately. How do you feel about that? Terrible. We don't just like you gold even more, <laughs> even more than pick and pay. Don't you wish you'd been, you'd been shot down instead? But he <laughs> didn't. He survived. Remember, catch me on Twitter. Give me your share shootout suggestions and your thoughts as well. You can follow me on Twitter at Bruce Business. Catch us next week again as we continue to pick out winners and shoot out the rest. And maybe one day when he comes back from orbit, Mark Ingham will and try to beat his record of three wins in a row. The best performance in the history of Share Shootout. Till next time, bye-bye.